What's up, everybody? My name is Shannon, and I am still waiting for my Seder. And today, we are talking about the second book in the Last Hours trilogy, Chain of Iron by Cassandra Clare. I am so in love with this book. I am so in love with these characters. The tropes are so good. Was it still too long? Yes. Did it go on, you know, just doing a lot of random stuff? Yes. But honestly, I am completely here for it. So as you know, uh, coming off the events of Chain of Gold, a lot of things happened. Um, and the main thing going on in Chain of Iron is our marriage of convenience between James and Cordelia. And of course, they, there is some mutual pining, there is some pining in secret, but this is a marriage of convenience. They're just like, oh, you know, we're just friends. We'll, we'll get a divorce after a year. And I'm like, mm -hmm, okay, you, you tell yourself that, honey. I absolutely loved this. This was such an amazing dynamic to put at the center of this book because with all the angst going on with James and Cordelia, like they get to spend so much time together. They really get to like grow and change as characters together. And you can see like how close their friendship is like they really are like such good close friends and it was amazing to get to see them spend that time with each other and because you get that side of the story but there's also other things going on there are these mysterious murders happening with shadow hunters they're not sure what's happening what's going on with that but James thinks he might have something to do with it there's some weirdness happening there but then you also get Lucy's side of the story and everything that she's doing with Grace to maybe bring back Jesse Blackthorne I really enjoyed that side of the story because it was so cool to see it from Grace's perspective. I wasn't expecting Grace to be such a major character. In the first book, I didn't really like her all that much, obviously, because she, you know, is manipulating James. But seeing her perspective in this book, you really get to see, like, her motivations and her wants and her desires and, like, why she does certain things. And I really enjoyed that. It added such a depth to her character. And I never in a million years, like, thought that was going to happen. And I mainly say that because she is kind of a Jessamine type of character and Jessamine didn't really get a ton of development. Meanwhile, Grace is definitely getting a lot of development there. Of course, along with Grace, you get to see a lot about Lucy. You get to see a lot about Jesse. Like it was just such an interesting like look at these characters and I really, really enjoyed that. I do think that this book does still suffer from the fact that it is just so long. Like there's so much happening and like for most of the book, like I'm on board with it and I'm fine, but then you hit the climax and like when you're listening to the audiobook you still have like two hours left and you're like why do I still have two hours and more stuff is happening but it does kind of like screw with the pacing just a little bit. I do think Cassandra Clare is doing something interesting by having her big action climax and then like the energy and the pacing kind of falls a little bit but then she has like a big emotional climax which does help you like get excited and want to go off and like read the next book and I will say the emotional climax in this one was a very good but it did come with something that I was like, oh, like why, why are we doing this with like a specific character? And I, I, I was really convinced that it was some kind of trick, but I don't know, I don't know what's going on there. So we're just gonna have to see where that goes in the next book. So I am giving this book an A plus. I think it was amazing. I think it was so good. The tropes are just amazing. I love the marriage of convenience. I love, you get to learn more about Alistair. You get to learn more about Thomas. You get to learn more about Matthew. Like more than anything, these books are about its characters, which I think, think is what was lacking for Mortal Instruments because Mortal Instruments had some great characters and the plot was like really weird and convoluted and didn't make sense and it kind of distracted from the characters whereas here the plot's pretty straightforward like it's just going on in the background we have these murders we're trying to catch this killer but we're also focused in on our characters and like their development and what's going on with them. So I would say like the plot is a lot smaller, but it's much easier to follow. It doesn't take away from the characters. And I'm really excited to see how it's gonna shape up later. And I will say, in the first book, I was confused. I'm like, I don't see how these two things fit together. They do fit together. Finally, the pieces are moving into place as we go into this book. So I'm excited. I'm really into this series. And I'm really upset now because I'm all caught up and the next book doesn't come out for a year. So I really recommend it. I definitely think you should pick up The Last Hours if you haven't yet. I will say you could probably read them on their own if you haven't read any other type of Shadowhunter book. But I do think it means more if you've at least read The Infernal Devices. You don't have to read Mortal Instruments. You don't have to read whatever those other ones are. 
but I do think reading Infernal Devices and then going into Last Hours just kind of helps it flow a little bit better. You're a little bit more attached to the characters, but you could read them on their own if you wanted to. I do think Cassandra Clare does a pretty good job with that. So I'm giving this book an A+, really recommend it. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, be sure to hit the like button down below and don't forget to subscribe to Not Books With Me every week. That is everything I got for today, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.